why are people so bothered? Why is it so important? And it's because of these, of these scripts. This one is Greek. This one is a, an Egyptian script called Demotic. And this one is hieroglyphs. Right? Now, hieroglyphs are a derivative. Sorry, demotic is a derivation of hieroglyphs. It goes hieroglyphs, hieratic, which we haven't got, and demotic. This is, if you like, shorthand hieroglyphs. Yeah? And being educated, enlightened, and gentle, lots of people could read this one. So they knew what this said, because they could all read Greek. And they thought it's probable that what it says there is the same as what it says there, is the same as what it says there. So that a, a, a multilingual, multi-alphabet society could read it. So I thought it probably says the same thing. Yeah? Um, and the first step was that, was that an Englishman by the name of Young noticed that the hieroglyphs had got some of the things in boxes. And they said, maybe, just maybe, he said, those are Greek names because this is a Greek script and it mentions Greek people. So maybe if you've got a Greek name, you put it in a box so people can know. And then he went away and did something much more simple, like, I don't know, anything's more simple than breaking this, to be honest. So he went away and gave up on it. <laughs> and um, until along came a man came called Champollion, who was a Frenchman. So although the French found it and we took it, the French cracked it. And over about 25 years, he managed to work it out. Now, Cham now Champollion was a polyglot genius. He was a, a genius at languages. He just had this thing for languages. He was really, really good for it. And by the age of 19, he was giving lectures on ancient dead languages to people. And one of the many, many languages, but he could speak Greek easily. He, he, he could do that. No, no time to tell <laughs> But one of the other languages he could speak was Coptic, right? And Coptic is the descendant language used in Egypt at the moment that people think is the language that ancient Egyptian evolved into. Right, so he thought that maybe this was in Coptic. And that if he could crack what this said in Coptic, he could work back to this. So what that is like saying is, I speak fluent Spanish, and therefore I can read Latin. Only it's actually several steps away from that. So that's the kind of thing you're talking about. Um, and so he, what, step one is he thought, well, actually, I've got to find some equivalences in here to here because I know that this has grown from that. So Coptic has grown from ancient Egyptian, and this alphabet is two steps away from this one. So what I need to do is find which steps in this work in Hieratic, and then which steps in Hieratic work in hieroglyphs. So he's two steps away from this using a language which is at least one step away from the one that this one is written in. <laughs> so it's no surprise it took him 25 years to do it. Um, but it worked and he was able. And the other, the other thing that makes it difference, quite often several of these funny symbols have an equivalence in this. So you've got another problem. And there is another problem with it as well, which I'll get to later. You know, this is very much the shorthand made easy. You know, hieroglyphs for dummies, if you like. Um, now, okay, so, fair enough, but why have we got an inscription in Egypt written in Greek in the first place? Why would we have that step that enables us to get on the, the end of it? And that's due to an accident of history. Now, um, Everybody heard of Alexander the Great? Yeah. Alexander the Great, about four, 342, somewhere around there BC, explodes out of, out of Greece, which his father's captured for him, defeats the Persian Empire, heads further on, captures Egypt, goes way across, captures Afghanistan, goes across the, the Hindu Kush and into northern India, where he meets um, a, a, an Indian king, um, on the, in the Indus Valley in what's now Pakistan, uh, in Pakistan kind of area. Um, and this guy has enormous horses called elephants. And, um, <laughs> and if you read the, 
the Macedonian scripts, um, Alexander defeats the Indian. And if you read the Indian scripts, the Indians defeat Alexander. So it was a draw. Um, <laughs> but anyway, whatever happens, at this point, after 12 years, the Macedonian army go, look, enough already, enough. We, we, you've dragged us 3,000 miles away from our families. Um, most of my mates are dead. I'm in this strange country with this, and it's, it's too damn hot, and, and I, I just want to go home. And basically, the Macedonian army, after 12 years, rebels and refuses to go any further. So what do you want? Do you want the entire world? What you've got, not enough. And Alexander, therefore, can't go anywhere further because he can't take his army with him any further, so he can't conquer anymore. And so he goes back to Babylon, where he does the ideal thing for world conquerors. He dies. It's massively important, if you are going to be a world conqueror, that you die at the point that you've gained your empire before all the problems of having your empire become manifest. <laughs> Henry V for England did exactly the same. He captures France, becomes king of, king of France and England, won the Hundred Years' War, yes, catches dysentery, dies. <laughs> Perfect. That's why he's one of the greatest kings of the English, because he didn't have to deal with the crap. <laughs> well, clearly he couldn't deal with the crap, because what killed him. Um, anyway, uh, so what happens is all the, all the Macedonian generals gather together and they go, well, what are we going to do? Alexander's pegged it. What are we going to do? We've got this massive empire and none of us are like him. We can't hold it. So they break it up. And they say, well, I'll have this bit and you have this bit. And Ptolemy gets Egypt. And for the next 250 years, the Ptolemies rule Egypt. Now, um, for that entirety of that period, all the boys are called Ptolemy. So your name would be Ptolemy, and your name would be Ptolemy, and your name would be Ptolemy, and your dad's name would be Ptolemy. Right? Got any sisters? Lucky, because you have to marry your sister. And your <laughs> sister will be called Arsino, Cleopatra, or Berenice. So for 250 years, the entire family have four names, three of them for the girls, and one of them for all the boys, and all the brothers and sisters, all, and the brothers and sisters marry each other. So it's a complete mess. So the only Cleopatra that you know about, Cleopatra the Seventh, the one that runs off with Antony and Cleopatra and Caesar and all of that, yeah? She has six great-grandparents. Because you follow them up this way and that one is that one. <laughs> um, so, what is going on is in 197 BC, which is when this is written, Ptolemy V has a problem. His dad Ptolemy is dead and his mum, who I believe is a Berenice, has been murdered. And his brother, and, and, and another Ptolemy is after his throne, and he's got Cleopatras and Berenices all over the place trying to have a go. And he's got a real problem, he doesn't know what's going on. And the native Egyptians are getting restless and they're about to rebel. So he goes to the priests at a place called Sice, way down the delta, and he says, Can you tell everybody that I'm the Pharaoh? Can you please tell everybody that I'm the Pharaoh? And the, and the, the priests of Sice go, Well, I could. I could. But what's in it for me? And he says, I'll tell you what, if you do that, you don't have to pay any tax. So this is a tax document. What it says is, Ptolemy is the pharaoh, like the pharaohs of ancient Egypt. And like the pharaohs of ancient Egypt, he is a god and is to be worshipped as a god and obeyed as a god. You know? And he is a god, honest. And because he's a god, he's told us that we don't have to pay any tax on this and that and that and that and that and that and that and that. And they produced this, and why is it in three scripts? Well, the ruling classes spoke Greek, so you write it in Greek, so they know that Ptolemy is a god like the gods in ancient Egypt. The priestly classes write Demotic, they're Egyptian, so they write in Coptic, and they're the, 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 the alphabet for Coptic is this one. So the priests can read it, you know, and so you've got the government and you've got the priests, and frankly, Nobody else counts, apart from these people up here. And this, the gods read hieroglyphs. And at this stage, only, you know, not many people write Greek, even less people write Demotic, because only the priests write Demotic, because only they're the people that are educated to write. And only a tiny subset of priests can write in hieroglyphs. So basically, it says the same thing three times, because it tells the gods that yes, Ptolemy is going to write there. It tells the Greek, the Egyptians, that Ptolemy is a god, and it tells the Greeks that Ptolemy is a god. So that's why it's, it's like that. 